I bet you think that's as far as we could go. Alex, is that as far as we can go or? It's not, it's not as far as we can go. In fact, I have a card trick to show you all. And it's one of those rare card tricks that actually has a title. What? What's it called? What do you call it's a trick called, like that? It, it's called, <laughs> why it's called further than that. Shut the front door. I'll show you why, I'll show you why. I know you're wondering why. In fact, I'm, I need some, Aaron, you're, you're in such a good state tonight. I think we should have you just help out with this thing tonight. You know, I, so I agree. I agree. Uh, what I, what, well, normally I would have someone reach in and just take out a card. Not tonight. This trick goes further than that. In fact, what I want you to do, Aaron, is I want you to think of a number, an, any number that you like between 10 and 20. Name a number. 13. 13. I'm going to count out 13 cards here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, normally if you saw a magician do a card trick, they would say, hey, here's this will be your card. Not tonight. We're going to go further than that. In fact, we're going to take your number 13. It's made up of two digits, right? One and a yeah. three. We put those two together, we get four. Let's use that number to randomize even further. I'm going to count down four. One, two, three, four. And in fact, I want you to just look at this card. I'm going to look away. Remember that card? Got yeah. it. Yep. I'm going to put it here and we'll in fact bury it down in the middle. It's gone. Gone. Now, if, uh, you know, this were a normal card trick, I would just maybe look in there and pull the card out and say, hey, there's your card, but not tonight. We're no. going to go further than that. In fact, the deck is going to tell me what your card is. Listen close, listen. Yeah. Eight, yeah, uh-huh. Ace of spades? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. Nice. Now, if this were a normal card trick, I would end it right there, right? But not tonight. We're going to go further than that. In fact, we're going to find your card by, well, using its name. I was so, sure it was over. A-C-E, the ace, right? And it was ace. spades, spades. Spades. S-E-A-D-E-S, -E ace of spades, ace, ace of spades. spades. It's the ace of Boom. spades. Wow. That's it. Boom. Now, normally, what? That'd be, the, that'd be the end of the trick right there, right? Wow. That would be the end of the trick, but not tonight. <laughs> We're going to go further than that. In fact, remember I spelled the ace, right? Yeah. Check this out. What? That's an ace. That's an ace. That's an ace. I spelled the spade over here, right? Spades, remember? Look, mm -hmm. seven, six, five, four, three, two. Look, all of those spades. The ace of spades. <laughs> That's got to wow. be the end. That's so well, beautiful. Normally you would say that's got to be the end of the trick, but really this trick goes further than that. <laughs> fact, not possible. In fact, if I were to use this ace of spades and I was going to play a game, I would, well, want to use it for poker and I would have it call a poker hand, right? One, two, three, four cards. That would make up a full poker hand. And in fact, if I look at my poker hand, I could see that I have here a 10, a jack, a queen, a king, and in fact, that's a royal straight flesh in spades, and I don't think you can go any further than that. Boom, all right. Finally, the end of a miracle. Oh, that's awesome. Alex, I love that. It's a good trick. <laughs> what was it like to have to watch all this crazy nonsense knowing you had a real trick to perform? You had, I had to a lot of fun, mentally. man. That, that, Quarter trick is awesome. I, mean, I was already familiar with the first one, but I love that too. That Elmsley trick was awesome, man. I love uh, it. It's just mentalism. This was a real piece of card <laughs> magic. You know, it's the kind of thing that Steve Barcelona dreams about at night. He thinks, oh, if I could, if I could just see another piece of card magic. If only. Just <laughs> it's one why my wife it. feels so neglected. What happened? Like I really <laughs> leave, man. We're all we're all <laughs> contemplating that thought, dude. I mean, that neglect, it, it must be painful. Did I did I go too far with that? <laughs> oh wow.
Yeah, awkward silence. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> lots of them tonight. And that's it, further. folks. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> you went further. George says you went further. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. Thanks, everyone. Can we learn it? Can we learn oh, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, don't leave us hanging, man. That was like leaving me high and dry. I want to know it. Well, that's my time. <laughs> <laughs> Tip your weight staff. <laughs> Try the fish. <laughs> All right, so this is, I hate to say it. I mean, I like to say it, but I, but I hate to say it. This is basically a self-working card trick. <laughs> If you just go through the procedure of everything that went down, and in fact, I almost hijacked the very first part of this trick for the Use the Force uh, uh, live event and in the AP because it's just a really great card force that starts the whole thing off. So you need a small setup. Uh, so if you're following along at home, get out of your deck of cards, and I encourage you to follow along at home if you have a deck of cards handy because you'll, you'll see that this is really easy and you'll, you'll have this by the end of tonight. Uh, pull out the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, and seven of spades. The four aces, all four aces, and then those four cards that make up the rest of the royal flesh, the 10, the jack, the queen, and the king of spades. And you could just as easily replace, uh, well, no, you can't. No, you can't, no, you can't replace anything. It's gotta be the way it is, sorry. I was thinking you could, but there are no variables. It is what it is, you're married to this setup. So two through seven of spades, the four aces, then the ten jack, queen, and king of spades. You can finish out that royal flesh in spades. So the setup is very simple. You're going to put those spades on top in numerical order. That is, the two is on top. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the top of the deck, right? The two is on top. Uh, below this little spade slug, you're going to put the next uh, three aces, just regular three aces. And then below that will be the ace of spades. So if you're uh, keeping track at home, that ace of spades is now 10th from the top of the deck. And then you're going to put the spades in order, uh, 10, jack, queen, and king below everything there. And then this goes on top of the deck. And that's the setup, very simple. You could very easily bring this out and do a jog shuffle and keep things real fair before you go into the trick just as long as you keep that stack on top. Uh, you could also just as easily put a breather or a short card on the bottom of the deck, and that way you can cut this slug to the bottom, and when it's time to do the trick, you, have, you can use all the rest of the deck for any other magic you wanna do, and when it's time, you just cut to your break and bring that slug back to the top. So you can have it in the middle of a set if you like. Uh, or you can do what I did and just have it set up in the box, and I just did a very simple uh, Hindu shuffle. I just picked up less than half and just showed a bunch of different faces and apparently a shuffle, right? I just didn't touch my stock that's at the top of the deck. And then I flip it over, bringing my stock into play and spread the cards and introduce the premise of this card trick has a title, right? For us, we know that all the card tricks have titles, but for laymen, they don't know that card tricks have titles. They don't know what, how magicians think about magic and how they categorize magic. So this line gets the reaction when you say this trick actually has a title it's a world famous title and you'll see why right and then you hey, hey alex idea further than that yes sir so so i know you're you're about to get into the working could you real quick just show us from the top of the deck what the exact setup is one more time it's a two it's a two it's a, it's a two three four five six and then seven of spades right so just remember that that spade block is in order through seven on top, followed by the three aces that are not the spade, right? And then the 10th card down will be that ace of spades. That'll be the force card. And this is, uh, if you wanted to use this first part, it's just a force. I don't see why you would though, because it's, it goes so great with this trick. If you're gonna use this force, do further than that. But you could easily dissect and take just that force out of this trick. And this is how you would do it. Just have your force card 10th from the top. Great. So Thank followed you so much. by that 10, now we're at 10, Jack queen and king of spades for that royal flush uh, finish that comes at the end. Perfect, thank That's you. It. Okay, continue please. So now uh, I spread the cards out, introduce the premise of further than that and so forth, right? And I illustrate my first further than that <laughs> by saying normally when you see someone do a card trick, 
they'll have you reach out and take a card. And this sort of hides this weakness of, I'm going to have you name a number for the selection of the, uh, of the card. It, it sort of masks that it's a weakness and makes it into a strength. Normally, I'd have you just take one out. But tonight, we're going to go further than that. In fact, I want you to think of any card between 10 and 20, right? And I just downplay that 10 and 20. And they name, name a number between 10 and 20. So Adam, just name any number between 10 and 20. 15, what, what happened with 15? Perfect, let's do 15. So legitimately, and everybody follow along at home, if you want to play, we'll use 15 as our number. Just deal down 15 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Set the rest of the pack aside. And now you're going to mix things up. And you say, now normally this would be your card here, but tonight we're going to go further than that. And now you're going to introduce the second concept, which is what makes the force work. 15 is your number. So we're going to take the digits of 15, that's a one and a five, add those together to get one number. What's that number, Adam? Six, that's right. And now we deal down six to further randomize the selection procedure. One, two, three, four, five, and the sixth card will be that ace of spades, which is a beautiful moment, right? You force the card now. So are you saying that works for any, any number they name? Between 10 and 20. Really? Yes. Wow, that's it's a really- just a beautiful, It's just a, like I said, I wanted to include it in the force event, but I, this trick, it wants to be with this trick, right? It's tough to that's, dissect it out of this trick because it works I, so great for all of this, right? I, I have never seen that force. I'm curious, everybody out there in chat land, I put a one in chat if you've seen that force before. Not, not many people have. Wow, okay. Okay, cool. Please continue. Very, very cool, though. So now they, you count down six, you show the card, you look away, they see that card, right? And now you drop that card on top of the dealt down cards and drop everything on top. <laughs> Pardon me, and as you pick up everything, you say it gets buried in the middle, right? So now it's buried in the middle of the pack. Everyone's seen you cleanly put it in the middle of the deck. And now you say, now normally, I'll go through somehow, or, or you would see a magician go through somehow and pull out a card, and they would say, that's it. Not tonight, we're going to go further than that, right? Continuing that tagline, going, going further than that. And uh, now I say the deck is actually going to tell me what your card is, and I pick up the deck. It's a force, I obviously know what it is. It's in my setup spot, I obviously know what it is. But now, I uh, just riffle this up next to my ear, and I do this. Um, when I riffle it next to my ear, I give it a little bow like this, and what that does is it makes it click a little bit louder than if you didn't do that, right? Just push a little bit, and your finger against that sort of makes the deck into a sounding board so that people can hear it from at least a few feet away, right, when you do that. So it's just a simple riffle. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, ace of spades, and you act a little bit like the deck is telling you what it is, and it's ace of spades. And now, because you reassembled everything, the ace of spades is in the position so that you can just deal out ace of spades. And notice that I'm dealing these in opposite positions for me so that it reads like a book for the spectators that are looking head on, right? So I start over here and deal out ace, A, C, E. Deck just told me it was the ace of spades. Deal here, spades, S, P, A, D, E, S. Ace of spades, turn over the next card, ace of spades. Wonderful moment. And that really does look like it's the end of the trick, right? When you stop there and you say, and you, you do this, everyone applauds and you go, and if this was a normal trick, that would be the end. But tonight we're going to go further than that, right? So, and they, they when these start coming more and more as you get closer to the end, they, start, they don't see them coming. So it's a, it's a good moment. And you say, now these cards here, remember I spelled the ace here, these cards, you flip them over. And I, I create this, this picture. The cards are going to be in a V like this, and then the royal flush will be here in the middle. So uh, keep that in mind as you're laying the cards down on your table in front of you, and, and we're going through this. So the aces, I pick them up, and I deal down and show an ace, an ace, and an ace. Like I said, a V here, and then I'm going to do the same here with the spades. So now I pick these up, and I count these out. I say seven, six, five, four, three, two, those are spades. Ace and a spades, the ace of spades. And again, 
totally looks like it's the end of the trick. Bam. <laughs> Say, now normally that would be the end of the trick, but tonight we're going to go further than that. And you do it again. And now the trick is done, right? All you need to do is deal out the top four cards. The setup got you there. All we need to do is deal this ace of spades onto the table and mention that if I was using this in a card game like poker, I would use this to attract four more cards to complete my poker hand. One, two, three, four. Set this off to the side because this is the, this is the action, all of this right here. And those four cards that I attracted would be, of course, the 10, the jack, the queen, the king. I drop the ace on the top and pick up the whole fan and say, and you can't get, you can't go much further than a royal straight in space. <laughs> Yeah, nice. And then set it down again so you have this beautiful picture. Yeah, that's a the Barcelona's going to do that trick, aren't oh, you? Oh, I'm already. That's awesome right there. Now, <laughs> I do have a question though. Mm -hmm. Um that force is amazing. And yeah, right. I kind of half remember it, but let's go through that. Let's try a couple of numbers and see how Well, you know, this gives us a good opportunity because if you look at this spread, if you, were, if you were in a situation where you were maybe doing this a couple times in a night, check this out. All I have to do is reverse these spades to complete the picture to have it be the same way every night, right, or every, every performance. If you pick up these spades, while they're looking at this picture and appreciating it, you just reverse these. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pick up the aces, put them on top. The ace of spades goes there. These go on top, and now I'm set up. Right? So... Having said that, uh, you'll watch this again and you'll get that, the details on that. But let's set it up again and we'll go through the whole thing one more time. And from the top down, we have the two, the three, four, five, six, and seven of spades, right? That's the top of the deck. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> and right below that, the three aces, followed by that ace of spades. And again, if you're keeping track, that is the tenth card in the slug. And then we have the ten, jack, queen, and king in order below that so it's a 14 card slug and that goes on top of the deck and like i said when i bring them out of the box i can pick up and give them a quick hindu shuffle so they just see a bunch of faces and shuffled cards right turn them down and mention that they could take one out but i'm going to go further than that i want you to just think of a number any number between 10 and 20. they say a number between 10 and 20. let's say that it's 16. why not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Set the cards off to the side. And now you take the two digits of that number, sixteen. That's a one and that's a six. I put them together, that makes seven, right? Because at this point, you would say, uh, if this was a normal card trick, this would be your card, but we're going to go further than that, right? So if we take the digits of your name number, sixteen, we add the one and the six together, that gives us seven. That'll further randomize the selection here. So let's go for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Have a look at the card. They look at eights of spades, because that's the force, right? If you're following at home. That goes on top of everything that's been dealt down. You drop everything on top, and now you say every, and, and your card gets lost in the middle. You drop that there, right? Now, normally, the magician would then pick up the cards and look through and maybe find your card. Not tonight. I'm going to go further than that. In fact, I'm going to have the deck of cards tell me what the card is. And again, I do that little make it make a loud noise. And, you know, I listen and go, oh, right. Yeah, Ace of spades. Yeah, that was it. Now, normally, that would be the end of the trick. But tonight, we're going to go further than that. You said Ace of spades. Let's find the Ace of spades. A, C, E. Ace, spades, S-P-A-D-E-S, -E ace of spades. There it is, the ace of spades. Set that down. Normally, that would be the end of the trick, but tonight we're going to go further than that. Remember these cards I dealt out here. For ace, look, those are the aces. Remember I dealt here for spades. Look, these cards, they're all spades. There's a seven, there's a six, there's a five, there's a four, there's a three, there's a two, all the spades but you picked the ace of spades. Looks like the finish again, right? No, that's not the end. We're going to go further than that. Now, if I was playing poker, I would use that ace of spades to call the perfect poker hand. And I need four more cards to complete it. Two, three, four cards. And of course, these cards are the 10, the jack, the queen, the king of spades, and a perfect royal straight flush in spades. You can't go much further than that.
Yeah, man. Give the band some ones. Alex. That's so cool. <laughs> I love that. It is so cool. Hey, someone mentioned something in the uh, in the chat about it that further than that is actually on YouTube that you can find it as that. Uh, I don't actually say further than that. I did it here because magicians know further than that. We t I think we talked about it maybe in the after show. I, do, I say something completely different. I say this trick is better than that so that there is no being able to search for it. And I play with that phrase. I have a couple of different phrases I've thrown out and I suggest that you do change the phrase when you do the thing uh, for that reason. But uh, I think better than that gets you there, you know? So play, have fun. The, the, the thing about, right, uh, Stuart James is further than that, right? Is that magicians have really latched on to the presentation premise as much as the trick itself. Yeah. Right, because it's, it, it had a hook to it, uh, which, you know, is a pretty rare thing in a magic trick. Uh, and I think for a lot of people, that presentation is such a lovely construct that it applies to so many tricks where things just keep getting better and better and better. So I think lots of times we've seen people say further than that, further than that, and they're just doing different trick where it gets goes further than that, you know? So, so you're suggesting that if we just change one word, we don't bump into any of those search terms. Exactly. Exactly right. For what it's worth. <laughs> so you too can go further than that. You know, I, there was a couple of references you mentioned in the, in the video that I think are pretty important if you're a Conjurer community member um, that, you should, uh, that you should know. First of all, um, in the back room, uh, we have um, the Miracle Force formula which uh, has an entire, I mean, it's like the greatest work on forces. I mean, it really has a tremendous amount of different kinds of force systems, cutting forces, um, everything from riffle to spread to Hindu, it goes on and on. And this has tons of videos in it. So this is a great reference. Don't forget that you guys have that in Conjure community at your disposal. When I am often looking for a force to go to, I like to go in there and scan those and just try to remember what I'm forgetting because, you know, the best force for any situation is usually the one you're best at. But, but most of the time, some, some plots or some devices require a different type of handling or a different type of force. Uh, maybe, you know, a hands-off approach or, or, or a, a particular kind of spread just because you have to do it that way. So anyway, that's a great reference for Conjure community members. Don't forget that you have that in the back room. It's really interesting, you know, I mean, uh, just so everyone knows, Stuart James was the creator of this trick and he created so much magic, not just with cards, with all kinds of things, that, that the books, I don't know, maybe Mark can tell us, Mark, how many volumes was that book and ex approximately how many pounds would you say those Stuart James books actually are? Because they're like two of the biggest card books you've ever seen in your entire life. Three volumes, 87 pounds. It's literally <laughs> a, a joke. It's like Encyclopedia Galactica. It's like uh, what Isaac Asimov was talking about. And we used to go to a magic convention in Canada with the guy that wrote those books. His name was Alan Slate and uh, probably still is. And he worked on these books very, very hard for a very long time. But there was no one, you couldn't even bring a book like that across the border if he gave you one, right? It's like tonnage, right? So then the next year we went back and he went, look, we made a volume that, that is more likely to be read. And he literally took 52 or so tricks out of those 87 pounds of the hits and put them in one book. So it finally was a version that a poor student such as myself uh, would read. Now, Alex, I noticed something because I was looking this up today. You're doing the handling a little bit different, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. For me, it was about being able to have one deck that did the whole thing. Like I mentioned, the, the short card idea, I use that often, right? I just want to be able to use the deck of cards as a deck of cards, and I just have a small slug. It's only 14 cards that make that, that trick happen, right? And you can control 14 cards and not have them get in the way as long as you're not using specific cards for a specific trick, right? And uh, for me, it was just a way to have one deck, have this, someone mentioned it in the, in the chat, to have this nice little thunderbolt where I could just say, all right, one more, everybody come over here, let's do one more. Pressure's off because it's a self-working trick and I can just do this thing 
and just knock them down, do one more and be awesome magic guy with a gambling theme and put it away and thank you. Good night. You know? So for me, it was, it was a device in that sense, but yeah, Mark was mentioning the idea that at the end you then produce all of the flushes and all the others, you know, you, you, you basically are using the rest of the deck for more revelations. And uh, that was my trade off, right? I traded that for being able to use the rest of the deck for other effects. But yes, if you look at the original Stuart James uh, write up of this, you'll see that it is a little bit different. You get a little bit more climax out of it, but I traded the climax for being able to use the deck as a, as a regular deck. So. Um, if you guys would like, while I can still remember it, I can run through the basic blocking so you can see more or less what it was. I think what Alex has done is far more theatrical, but it's an interesting quick thing that can be shared. So same basic premise. I'll just run through it. Uh, and I won't go further than that. Uh, name us a number between 10 and 20. 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Three plus one is what? Four. One, two, three, four. You look at that card. Don't tell anyone what it is. It, it kind of is such a wonderful thing. Every time I look at it, when I was looking at the trick, and I, every time I see it, I'm amazed. <laughs> right, every time I turn over, go there it is. You know, it is wonderful. <laughs> <That'd be> possible, <laughs> right. it's really wonderful. And so you put that back, you drop that down. So far, so good. Then he says, uh, "Gonna go further than that." I can tell you, it was an ace. And he does this: A C E. I go and it's spades. S P A D E S. And there's your card. But then he goes further than that, and he takes these cards, and he turns them over. I think Alex is getting a lot more out of it because he's making that extend that moment, and I think that's a really wonderful thing, right? And then, and then he goes further than that, going into Alex's much wiser, certainly un- Harry Lorraine would not be pleased with the picture I'm making. That's what he does. And then that leaves you with the eight and the nine. So Mark was saying that at that point, he does a two card catch for eight and nine, and you can produce the others in uh, any way you want or move into an ending. I think Alex has got that ending really, really tight. One thing that occurred to me while watching uh, you, Alex, was that it just, as we were sitting here, it's a pretty easy matter if you wanted to do something like this at the end, you could say, but we'll go further than that, right? Turn some face up, turn some face down. You can give them a little shuffle, like so. You can see the cards are well mixed. You can give them another shuffle. The cards are extremely well mixed. One more shuffle, and we could have face-up cards, face-down cards. We could do this all day long, and then if you wanted, you could find all the rest in that. Great, pack. great. I love that. That's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. So, so the point is, you have between four and six cards at the end that you can. You could do a multiple revelation. You can do anything you want, and it's a really great. Uh, exercise, looking at what to do with those cards and decide uh, what pleases you. I personally was so excited by watching Alex's solution after reading it this morning. Uh, I, you know, I may well just be sticking with Alex's, but it's a great exercise to play with because you can go in a thousand different directions. Mark produces the two and then the rest in a different way. And of course, carries on with the rest of the deck. Uh, and Stuart James even mentioned in the book in many of the ways that people released it based on his basic trick, uh, that one was released without credit shortly thereafter, where the entire rest of the deck was blank. Hmm. So, huh. so it, there's opportunities there, right, for you to play with that in any way that you want. Uh, hey, Aaron, we had a, Don Tuttle asked a good question here. Yeah. Uh, he, he says, what, what uh, do you talk about uh, if they say 20, how do you handle if they say 20 or 10? Uh, in this, it, it, you want to make sure that you say between 10 and 20 when you ask for that number. Uh, there's a reason for it because presentationally, it'll still work. It'll still work if they say 10 or 20, right? It'll still work. It's just 
it's two plus zero or one plus zero. And, you know, it's just not as exciting. So it's better to say, you know, between 10 and 20 or the option that I use, I just, I just act like they, they misheard me and I just go to someone else. They say 10 and 20, 20, I go, you say one between 10 and 20 and I'll just go to mm-hmm. someone else. So I'm not stepping on it and I don't have to feel like I'm, you know, reprimanding anyone or smacking their hand with, with a ruler or anything. I just move on. Just move, you know, give, that's give, fun though. 20. Yeah. You beat him up a little. Yeah. You know, smack. I, I, I think so you're that, saying you carry the ruler. I do. <laughs> well, I use a wand, obviously. R- obviously. How could, you, I, if, how could if, I be so naive? If you're clear with the people and you say, I want you to name any number between 10 and 20, and you can see that they're not so drunk when they look at your eyes that they hear you, it tends not to come up. It really doesn't come up. Uh, I'm mentioning it because it came up in the chat. The reality is, is that it's like, you know, one in like 20. Someone will say, I, I want 20, I want 10. And you just, you know, you just have to push them in the right direction. Because, you know, people want to help. They want to see the trick be successful. Generally, people like to help magicians. In my experience, they aren't looking to screw me up in my experience. So uh, I, I think they genuinely are just trying to work with you. And they, when, the, when they say 10 or 20, I think they genuinely just misheard you or they glossed over it and they didn't hear between, right? So I don't think people are trying to mess with you when they're doing it. You just have to sort of push them in the right direction. I think one of the fun uh, challenges of the trick That's a little one, not a big one, right? But there's a little challenge also in making sure to sell that force so that it feels like a a good random thing. You you have to sell that, right? And there's one other thing about that. Uh, You might feel the temptation to linger on that card that they're seeing it and move quickly past that because they might mention, ooh, that's a good one or whatever. And then someone might later say, well, he, he gave you a clue. He told you where it was. So just once they see the card, you say, you got it, good. Let's put it back, let's put everything away. Good, let's move on. Just so they don't have time to linger on the fact that it is an ace of spades because that's, that's a pretty prominent force card if you're having someone select a card, you know? There, there might be suspicion if you allow it to grow. 